Hi everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. My name is Abdi for ASR 3D and Motion Graphics. Today I would like to show you how you can create a skirt and attach it to an animated model and create something like this using 3ds Max and Typhlo Pro. Typhlo Pro version because I am using the CUDA solver for this example and if you don't have the Pro version I also have a tutorial which is an hour long and explains how to simulate cloud with no CUDA at all. So here are some around five to six examples that are really showcasing how you can do that without using CUDA. So if you have the free version, take a look at this one maybe first and then come back to this tutorial and see if you can implement those techniques into that one. Now let me jump into 3ds Max. I have already imported the model. This is coming from Mixamo and she is doing some dancing and we're going to attach a skirt to her body and create the simulation. So for this, let me just go and add an edit poly modifier on top of the skin here. So there we go. And now turn on the wireframe. I'm going to select this edge here, ring it, control click on polygon selection and go to detach, make sure it is detaching as clone and call that skirt and then press enter. So now I can delete the edit poly again and just select the portion I just So detached, go and remove the materials of it, set it to another color, and then go and select the bottom edge or bottom border, shift drag it down to a point where I think it's a good length, and then I can go to my scale tool, set it to local, and scale it that way and scale it this way. So top view and move it back a bit so it is not touching the body. This is what we have so far. It is looking good. Now let me just straighten the bottom here. Select Okay, let me go here first. So we have some density here, and here is not so much. So I'm going to try to match the spacing as good as possible. So we have equal spacing everywhere, and not too dense meshes in the front and in the back of it. So control backspace remove everything and select this guy ring it go to loops and then set flow so that looks actually much better now so let me go and select these edges on the top and scale them up as well something like this and now I would like to go here and select this edge, ring it, and then control click on the polygon selection again and set the material ID here to the polygon ID to number two. Control I and make sure everything else is in number one. Now select the edge again, ring it, connect, and give it some segments. Just make sure it is more or less equal spaced. That is what we have now. This is good. So in order to have a good simulation, we need somewhere around 60,000 polygons. 
right now we have 80, uh, 18,000. So I go and turbo smooth that. One, two, yeah, well, three is just, four is too much. Three is actually okay. So we have somewhere around 60,000 polygons. That should give us enough density to have a good simulation. So now we have this. I'm going to set up tie flow here. Right away, time step, set it to one eighth. And we go and add birth object. Select my skirt. Then go to cloth bind. Here we're going to change some stuff. We go and set the stretch to 0.75. Shear to 0.75, bending to 0.2, and change the stiffness solver to constraint, and enable CUDA solver here. So thickness 0.3, and enable self collision. This is what we need for now. We can bring down the friction to 0.1. And this is for the cloth bind settings. So now drag out a surface test and go and pick our skirt again here from the list and set the surface test mode to material ID and make sure that we set it to equal to number two. So this is why I added the ID number two to the top part of the skirt. Now it sends it to this event and here we go and add a particle switch deactivate them and go and add object bind in order to bind it to our dancer make sure look to surface is activated so it is not sinking into our mesh from from dancer here the next thing is force we need in this event Oh, sorry, yeah, in this event. And we set it to minus 0.36. And then we also need collision. Pick the body again. And set the absolute radius to 1. And friction, I'm going to set that to 0.1 as well. And variations, 0. So, now when I go and start the simulation just like this, it will start simulating that out of this cylinder that I have created as a skirt, and that looks pretty weird, and that is looking everything but like a skirt. So, when I go and run this, this is what happens everything starts together. She starts dancing and that thing starts to take shape and this is looking pretty weird and this is not nice to start an animation just like this. So in order to avoid that and in order to start with something that already looks like a skirt, I'm going to go two things. I'm going to go and set a slow modifier into that flow. Set it to 9. And I'm going to change the starting point here to minus 50. But before I do so, I go and select both flows and then copy them. Create a new tie flow. Deactivate or just turn it off. Disable it. And then paste those flows into here and go back to tie flow number one. You will see in a second why I've done that. So now go to birth objects again and change the birth uh, particle birth from uh, starting point to minus 50 and then press enter so now it will calculate it two seconds before the actual animation of the model will start so this is done now and as you can see that looks much more like a skirt 
than what we had before. So now I want this one to be actually my skid mesh and not the cylinder that I had. So for this I can go and add an edit poly modifier here, right click and go to collapse to. So in this way I'm killing the entire tie flow setup that I had and all I have is just that mesh as my skid now. So now this is why I copied actually the tie flows setup before I did all that. So now I can go and change this name to skid mesh. This is our new skid that we have created. I can go and get rid of the old one. And now tie flow number two. We're going to change the time step again to one one eighth, and then open the setup or the editor, and we here we have everything already set up. So we have that from zero. Now we have to change this one and pick the new skid mesh. Let me turn it on. We don't need the slope rider anymore. You can go and delete this one. Here we have to select the new skid again. And everything else should work already. So now when I start the simulation with this one, that will look much better. Let me go and do that and wait for it until it is done. So the simulation is done now, and before I go and play that back, I would like to export the entire simulation to TyCache. This is also available in the Pro version. Cache the files here. So set it to timeline and generate cache. There we go. Now I can go and disable this one. So we have the tie cache here, let it go. And this is what it looks like. So when I go and create a tie preview out of that, we can see that in real time after it's finished. So now that is done, and when I go and play it back, this is the result we have. Looks pretty good. It is not perfect, so, but you can go and tweak the settings such as bend and shear and stuff like that to make it happen what you are looking for and the mesh density is also playing a big role in the whole setup so important is to have a really clean mesh so all the vertices should be all those vertices that should be welded together should be welded together so you shouldn't have any open vertices and you should avoid having quads and um, triangles and so on just a mess in your topology so clean up your topology if you don't have a good one and that will allow you to get much much better results this is really the key and the rest of it is just tweaking and watching it over and over again until you are happy with the results that you are creating. So I hope this tutorial was helpful to you and I'm wishing you a great and successful time. Bye bye.